Hi friends, now I am heading towards something more interesting which is how to buy a property overseas. We talked about when one should buy, we talked about how to buy in India. Now I am talking about that you are wealthy, you can afford to buy destinations where overseas are there. If you want to have inclination to buy overseas, how to buy property overseas. It is presumed that you have already selected the destination, whether Dubai, whether Singapore, whether London, whichever town you feel happy to buy the property. You have done a market survey by going to the websites, you have done market survey by visiting the these towns, these places, brokers, developers to see what is the quality of the buildings there, what is the quality of the apartments there. So these things in any case like a property buying in India, you will be doing it for overseas. I am coming specifically post all these assessment when you are in a position to identify the specifics of a property, what are the requirement of the Indian law and conditions, how you can buy the properties since you are an Indian resident. If you are a non-resident, obviously you don't require to do anything with the Indian government. Hence, being an Indian resident, Indian passport holder staying in India, what compliances you are expected to do when you propose to buy overseas any property. The Reserve Bank of India maintains regulations which is called Foreign Exchange Management Guidelines. Under FEMA, all the authorized dealers which are the banks makes a compliances when you ask them to remit money for any purpose which is a capital account transaction. Property purchase comes into a capital account transaction. Hence, when you propose to buy a property, after identifying the property, first identify a lawyer who would be representing you in that offshore jurisdiction to represent you to buy the property from the developer or from the existing owner. Once you engage the services of that lawyer, have the contract signed with them, what will they do for you is to do the all legal framework, to do the completion of job, to maintain an escrow account for getting the funds from India to their account as a client account, to see the property is non-encumbered and once everything is done, to exchange the money with the seller's lawyer or sellers as per the local conditions of the country and get the proper title deed to get you the full title of the property. With these, once you have hired the lawyer, then you are expected to deal with the authorized dealer in India. There is a scheme called LRS, Liberalized Remittance Scheme, under FEMA of Reserve Bank of India, where any resident per person per financial year April to March is allowed to remit up to $250,000 per year per person of the family members. So if there are three members in the family, each one can send this kind of a money per year. Then you have to identify whether your money requirement can be fulfilled by this scheme. If yes, yes, then apply to the authorized dealer bank along with the escrow agreement, along with the offer document from the seller of the property, along with your clear funds in your bank so that bank can see all documents, see the paperwork and thereafter they allow you to remit the money of $250,000 to the escrow account of the lawyer where the money will sit in till the time he completes the property transaction. Friends, it is very important that you are aware of the changes always into the FEMA guidelines as LRS is a scheme which has been in place for the last over a decade but there use and effectiveness has been changed. Originally when it started, it was $200,000, then it brought down to $125,000, then it was further brought down to $75,000, then it went up to $250,000. Sometimes LRS was allowed to purchase the property, sometimes it was not allowed to purchase the property. As you can understand, when the limit went down from $200,000 to $75,000, which means the country's reserves were dwindling they needed not more money to go out of the country. Hence, at that time, LRS did not permit to be used to buy the property. Once the limit went up, again back to $250,000, which shows that the country's forex reserves are in a happy situation. Hence, RBI relaxed the rules and guidelines whereby they now allow to use these funds to pay the property price. Sometimes you can buy the property which are in the development phase also. 
which means you can pay the money in a year's time, two years time, three years time linked to the construction. Hence, you can use this LRS which is liberalized remittance scheme by sending the money in parts every year. Now you have to see that what is the property which makes you comfortable if it is a down payment then in one year time. If it is not down payment then it can be in two years LRS, three years LRS can be easily swapped. I will make a specific point here. As an Indian resident you are not expected to have the mortgage overseas and to take the loan against the property. If you want to have the mortgage against the property Overseas bank will be very happy to give you without asking any permission or seeking any permission. Reserve Bank of India does not permit you an automatic approval route to take the loan for buying the property overseas. Which means if you intend to take a loan, please apply to Reserve Bank of India through your banker at once and take their permission which normally is not so easily granted. Hence, you should think of buying the property overseas only when your own resources are adequate enough to make sure that you can afford to buy that property. Once you buy the property, all income of that property is to be shown in Indian income tax besides the other taxation so that all compliances of FEMA as well as income tax of India are adhered to and complied with. Besides taking a guidance from my, no my talk, I would suggest that when you want to buy the property overseas, Please talk to your tax expert, please talk to your firm expert so that you do not make any unwarranted mistake. Thank you.